Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host, Charles. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different of a format than we've used in the past. Um, it's going to be more of a Jimmy DeResta, DeResta's Cut style time lapse video, um, and I'm going to just do a little voiceover while we watch the video. Um, so, this video is about three or four months old at this point. Um, I'd originally planned to just scrap it because I didn't like the way I shot it. I'm still working on the style for this kind of stuff. But uh, I decided to go through with it and just kind of, like I said, make it like a Durestus Cut style video. Um, so basically today I'm building a uh, workbench slash assembly table for my workshop. And it's the one you've seen in photos and other videos that I've posted in recent months. Um, right here you see me cutting the stock for the legs and gluing them up. And uh, I chose this little L-shaped design because I'd seen someone else use it and it looked very sturdy. Unfortunately, I decided to glue everything together on the base of the bench and that turned out to be a problem later on. You don't see it on camera, but um, I needed to reconfigure some things. So I had to cut some wood off and actually use a chisel to scrape some dried glue up. Um, but basically it, it turned out okay in the end, as you'll see later on. One other mistake I made with these legs was I actually cut them about six inches, maybe seven inches too long. And uh, I didn't realize that until I had them all built, which was fine though because they were actually all a little bit different sizes because of the way I cut the, uh, the stock in the beginning. So by trimming them down after I was done, it actually made them all the same length. You can see here where I'm measuring to cut them down, and I guess it was actually more about closer to eight inches that they were off. Um, I'm using the Harbor Freight 12 inch uh, dual dual bevel compound sliding miter saw and so far I've been really happy with the saw. Um, I've used um, some DeWalt saws and a Bosch saw in the past um, but when I outfitted my own personal shop I kind of went the cheap route and bought this saw and it actually works fairly well. It's not 100% accurate but I've tuned it and played with it a little and shimmed some stuff here and there and it's very very close. Um, and now that I have a new table saw set up, I will generally trim to uh, I'll trim to the rough length here on the chop saw and then finish everything up on the table saw with a sled. So now we're getting into the uh, glue up of the bottom box is what I called it. And... Um, this is one of the parts I really wish I wouldn't use glue on, but I had to go back and change this at a point um, near uh, the end of the build because things just weren't measuring up. So basically I had to take all this back apart and uh, here you can see me drilling some holes and you'll notice on the end of the bits they have a countersink on them and I bought these on Amazon and I forgot the name of them but they were about $8 or $10 for a set of four and they are absolutely the worst. Um, bits in the world. I think I snapped all of them off and one the uh on one of them the uh the counter seek actually fell apart as well. I don't think I would ever buy these again. So attaching the legs, I didn't really care about the uh drill holes being perfectly square. It's just an assembly table. Um as you can see when I applied some of the glue it, it was a little messy and again gluing things up like this was just a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I am using three inch drywall screws. If this was going to be a project that I needed more uh, stuff on, more strength, I would use some actual construction screws, but these drywall screws work good for this. You'll see my, uh, my little beagle mix dog named Bowie throughout the video as well. Um, we've had Bowie for about four or five, maybe six months now. Um, he was a rescue from a shelter, and he's actually been a joy of our life since we got him. He's destroyed about four or five hundred dollars worth of stuff in the home, but um, his puppy phase is wearing off. And yeah, so we'll see him in more videos in the future. Here you can see me uh, cutting down the uh, the side rails for the top. I wanted them to have a nice square edge, so I sawed off the bevel and then ran them through my joiner. Um, this actually wasn't the best thing to do. I should have just ran them through the joiner in the begin with and 
just cut out the excess that way. Um, um, this was a mistake because the Craftsman table saw I had back then it was a piece of junk and it couldn't cut anything straight to save its life. Um, now the new, the new uh, table saw I have would be much, much better. So here I am setting up the side rails and I know the depth of my uh, plywood and hardboard inset um, for the surface so I just mark that off on all four of the 2x4s and then line the marks up um, to the legs. This actually kind of turned out to be a problem a little later too as I hadn't realized it but in the couple of days since I... Uh, I think it was a day or two um, since I built the uh, since I, I did the joining on them they'd actually warped a little and had a little bit of a crown in them and this caused me a lot of headache and heartache later on when I put the uh, the two surface pieces in so I had to take all this back apart at one point and re-level everything and in a few minutes you'll see me adding in some uh, stringers on the side behind this that uh, the surface fits on um, and I had to remove all that and redo that as well um, because I was getting high spots and low spots. Um, I chose this design where the surface insets into the into these two by fours because I wanted the edges and corners to have a lot of strength. Um, looking back, I shouldn't have done that, and I think in the future I'm going to rebuild this bench, and I'm actually just going to put a sheet of plywood on top of it. I thought the hardboard would look cool and be pretty and everything, but just with the kind of things I build, um, it's it's not that great of a decision. And I'll cover more of that later when you see me putting the hardboard on and why that's not a great decision for what I do. Um, and here you can see I'm just lining everything up and it's working out fine. But I would definitely not do this this way. Um, in an assembly table that's going to get abused and used. Um, if this was a you know a, a fine workbench that sat along the wall, or you know a surface that wasn't going to see a lot of like heavy stock being drug across it or something, I would definitely you know go with this hardboard look because it's beautiful. But um, you know it's not as beautiful as, as some fine plywood. But let's be honest, I don't really want to spend eighty to a hundred dollars on a sheet of plywood that I'm just going to bang up and destroy so yeah um so here you can see the stringers are being cut that i talked about and you'll see me install them in a second and i actually had to go back and redo almost all of this i didn't have to recut anything but i had to definitely adjust for the height of everything um it wasn't the uh it wasn't the most fun thing i had to do and i actually cut all of that out of the video because there was a lot of cursing and frustration going on um one recommendation that uh, I would give anyone is to add another two supports under each of the four foot sides. Um, you see I have two here but what I would do is put one in the middle and then one in the middle of each of the halves that it creates. Um, mainly this is because I've noticed that even like if I set something very heavy on one of the open squares I get a little bit of sag in it. Um, and that might be because I used OSB for the substrate and I did that just to save money. Um, looking back, I should have just took and used two pieces of uh, three-quarter inch plywood. So I'm using some Harbor Freight six-inch uh, little clamps here. And I found out they work very well. Um, I have probably 20 of them at this point. Every time I go into Harbor Freight, I buy two or three. Um, and they're clamps. I mean, I don't really need the Bessies. If I, could, if I need the Bessies, I'll buy them. But right now, these work for me. You can see one of my old table saws in the background too that was a Craigslist mistake. Um, now we're moving on to the uh, we're moving on to the uh, OSB substrate and I'm marking some screw lines for it down this those two uh, those two joists. Um, if I had to do this again, like I said, I wouldn't use OSB for the substrate. I mean, it's working fine. It's an assembly table, and the low cost in this means that when I need to replace it, I can just cut it up, use it for firewood if I have to, um, mainly because a lot of stuff's glued and screwed. Um, um, here's one of the mistakes of using the hardboard, though. I, I really, in the beginning, I thought I wanted a pretty workbench surface that uh, 
I could, you know, set stuff on and everything. But I'm finding out I just need a quick and dirty surface that if I need to screw something to it, I can screw something to it. And with the hardboard and stuff, I really don't want to do that. So the mistake comes in here where I'm screwing down the OSB, but I didn't want any screws to show through on the hardboard. So as you'll see in a minute, I actually just kind of took and glued the hardboard down with about half a quart of glue. And that's a mistake because when the hardboard gets damaged beyond repair, I'll have to remove it and add a new piece of hardboard. And with that much glue, it's going to be all but impossible. So I'm going to have to figure out where the screw holes are in the OSB and either drill those out and pull the screws out or just scrap the whole thing and start over. And like I said, I think I will just scrap the whole thing and start over after this completely wears out in a year or so. The uh, one other mistake I think I did when I built this was I didn't add in any drawers on the bottom. I just added this one big shelf. And I'm finding that I actually would like some drawers under here because I never put in the plywood on the bottom for my storage. Um, and I should do that. I'll get around to that in a couple days here probably because I'm reorganizing the shop. But I would like some drawers and stuff. Um, in the corner of the picture, you might have saw a. Uh, in the corner of the desk, you might have saw a ratchet strap. I had to do that to pull the thing square, as well, because something was off somewhere, and I just I didn't want to tear it back apart. And you just saw me go through and sand down all the little raised areas that the screws created when they went in the OSB. And that's one of the problems with oriented strand board is that, you know, if, if you put a screw in and you sink it at all, the fibers and the, the, the wood strands that are around it are going to bubble up a little. So you have to sand them down a little and if you want a really flat surface. So here you can see me putting on the, uh, the hardboard. And for some reason, all the hardboard I buy um, never lays perfectly flat. I see people on YouTube use it all the time and it lays really flat. But as you can see here, I had to find all kinds of just miscellaneous weight to set on top of this thing. Um, even then, once I got it in, and even though the OSB was perfectly square, the hardboard was not perfectly square. And I don't know if this is just a deal with the hardboard you get from Home Depot or if it's inherently a flaw, an inherent flaw in the hardboard that comes from this manufacturer. Um, but it was off by about an eighth of an inch on one side and a little over an eighth of an inch on the other. So I just scribed a line, took my uh, took my skill saw or my circular saw, whatever you want to call it, and I just went through and and trimmed it off. Made a quick little saw guide or tried to. It didn't work out for me, so I just cut it. Um, This still wasn't perfect after I cut it. I had to go back with a little block plane and trim it just a little more. And block planing the edge of, uh, of some hardboard isn't very fun. The other problem, when you cut hardboard, the fibers on the cut all like to bunch up and swell up. And so I had to go back with the sander and sand it even more. Um, but once everything got down and I got it flat, um, the, the fit was pretty tight. You can see me going around with a dead blow hammer, kind of trimming everything, moving stuff here and there. And uh, once I got everything flat, you'll see me take everything back off and start gluing it. Um, I use Type Bond 2 on this. Um, I don't really have a preference on wood glues as long as it's yellow and it sticks. I'm fine with it. Um, I know some people prefer Type Bond 1 and some people prefer Type Bond 3. So you can see me here going around the edge and I was marking for screws. And I got to thinking about it while I was marking the screws, and I decided that that just was not the look I wanted. So I kind of stopped, and I was I, I just I just decided that I just wasn't going to go with screws. So here in a second, I'll pull this last piece of weight off. It's an old butcher block that's split in half. So I lost some footage. My camera actually ran out of storage space, and I didn't realize it, um, of me taking the uh, hardboard back off. But as you can see here, I'm applying the glue. And um, I used a lot. I used way more than I should have. But it worked out in the end. The, the top is stable, and 
while this was a mistake and I now realize that it worked out fine for the time being um, my wrists were definitely hurting after squeezing this bottle for about two minutes straight um, what I really wanted to do was just pour the glue on and then use like a tile trowel that has the little uh, square cuts in it to even the glue out but after throwing it down like this and looking at it I decided that it was level enough and I just needed to go ahead and get the thing built so with time being an issue I decided to uh, just go ahead and put the hardboard back on and put a piece of OSB on top to kind of evenly distribute the weight I'm about to put on top um, I went to Home Depot and I bought eight concrete blocks um, they're heavyweight eight inch blocks and I just kind of evenly distributed them across the surface and um, while I thought this was enough um, I still had a few little doubts in my head in the back of my mind so I added a couple other things like some uh, like some of the uh, um, just heavy things around the shop like um, some butcher block broken butcher block pieces some fire safes um, a bandsaw scroll saw stuff like that um, in the end I think I let this sit for about 36 hours before I pulled the top off and that's gonna be it so overall I'm fairly pleased with how this turned out um, I'm not hundred percent happy with it because there's a couple things I would do different if I did it again one of those things would be to not actually wrap the surface with uh, two by fours um, I just after I got it all done and realized that that's gonna make this really hard to remove in the future um, once it gets damaged. I was using hardboard because I thought it'd be easier to replace than just a sheet of plywood. Turns out it's going to be a lot easier if I would have just had a sheet of plywood up here and just unscrewed it when I was ready to replace it. So I wouldn't do that again. Um, I wouldn't glue any of the 2x4 joints together. Um, I ran into some issues. The bottom box I built was about a quarter of an inch out of square and with these 2x4s coming from Home Depot um, they were kind of twisted a little bit after three weeks sitting here in my garage. So um, I called the ones that were great and I used them, but um, it still added a little twist and when I got to the top box and inset the plywood, um, the plywood wouldn't actually fit so I had to pull some stuff apart and you know tweak things here and there and having some glued joints that made things a little difficult. So until next time, hack the world and make awesome.